I'm Phyllis Brown. I'm from the Smocking Arts Guild of America, and uh, today I want to talk to you about bullions. Needles, of course, are very important. There are several different sizes of bullion needles. Um, the needles I have here today are size 1 through size 10, and, and you'll notice that um, with a um, needle, the, this is a Milner's or a straw needle, with that straw needle, the shaft of the needle and the eye of the needle are one straight area. They don't bulge out at the eye of the needle like several of our other needles do. Um, so this is the size ranges that we will use. Today I'll be using a number eight Milner's. Um, you may want to have a needle threader handy. And of course your thread, I've got embroidery floss here, but today I'm going to use Floch. This is how Floch comes in the hank. And I do not use a hoop for bullions unless I have a very long bullion where I need to um, anchor it down or couch it down. Then I would use, I would hoop my fabric and then that gives you the correct tension to be able to place that down on the fabric exactly where you want it and then to be able to get it so your fabric does not pucker or your stitch does not pucker. First way I'm going to tie on, I'm going to do a split back stitch. So I'm going to take just a small stitch in my fabric, just like that, and I'm going to pull my end to where I've just got a little bit left there. I'm going to come back in and I'm going to try to take a stitch straight down through there and to pierce that thread and then I'm going to come back out and that should be enough to anchor my stitch. Oops, that one didn't catch. Let's try that again. So again, I'm going to take a small stitch and back off the end a little bit further this time because I've split that so we can cut that off. I'm going to go ahead and try to split that thread that's below my needle there on the back of the fabric and I'm going to come up a little distance away and as I tug on that, that's sturdy enough for me to start my stitch. I'm going to trim the end off. Okay, now we're ready to start. So I have my thread coming out at what I'm going to call point A, okay, that's going to be what I want to be the top of my bullion, and I'm going to take my needle back down into my fabric below, and I'm going to call that point B, and the distance between point A and point B are going to be the length that I want my bullion stitch to be, okay, so I brought my needle back out into We're coming out at point A. I'm going to come straight down and back into my fabric at point B. The length between point A and point B is the length that I want my bullion stitch to be. But before I do anything else, I'm going to bring my tip of my needle back out at point A and I'm going to share that same hole just like that. Okay. I am going to hold my, I'm right handed, so I'm holding my fabric in my left hand, and you'll actually see I have my fingers on the back, and I'm going to hold my needle like this. You can fold your fabric out of the way if you're more comfortable doing that. And now I'm ready to wrap my needle, the thread around my needle, to make the coils that you see on bullions. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to do that first wrap. That's not really a full wrap, so I'm going to pull that one extra tight. Sometimes when you do bullion stitches you'll notice there's a little loop at the top of your bullions. This will help prevent that loop from happening. Okay, so now I'm ready to wrap. So I'm going to wrap. Let's try eight times and see. So I'm going to wrap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so I've got everybody, I'm keeping tension on my working thread. I'm going to move those wraps down and I'm going to see if the wraps that you see on my needle, if they will cover that distance 
that I see down here in this area. So let's see. Let's do one. Let's do two more reps and see. Okay, now this is a trick to me to making a successful bullion. I'm actually pinching my needle between the top and the bottom. I'm actually pinching and I'm going to push my needle through. I'm going to keep a lot of tension on that needle so I can keep all of my wraps in order and they don't all get, you know, a lot of times they'll get a little wild and we'll have all these bumpy and loose areas. Okay, so I'm pulling straight through. I'm actually pointing away from me with my needle and I'm still holding my fabric and I'm holding those, um, coils. I'm keeping tension on that. And I'm going to let go and take a look. Everybody looks like they're in good order. So keeping tension on that, I'm going to bring my needle towards me. I still have tension. I haven't let go yet. Now I'm going to take my thumb, my non-stitching hand, I'm going to hold that down and I'm going to pull everybody down and let's see how we look. Everybody looks pretty good. So, we're not done with our stitch yet. I need to go back down into my fabric at point B before I have finished. And that's a simple bullion. So, I'm going to go ahead and review right here on my chart. We come out, out of our fabric at point A, go back down in at point B. That is the length I want my bullion stitch to be. Next, I wrap the thread around the tip of my needle, keeping my coils together. I leave tension on my thread. I will actually pinch it, pull my needle through, pull that back down towards point B, or towards myself, and we're not finished until we take the needle back down into the fabric at point B. Now, a lot of students ask me, do I need to wrap my thread clockwise or counterclockwise around my needle? That makes a difference in which end of the thread you have actually placed in your needle. Sometimes you'll notice you'll have bullion stitches that will be real tight and coily looking. That's wrapping one direction. It's tightening the twist that the thread is actually made out of. If you wrap the opposite direction, sometimes you'll notice, especially with floche, that your thread becomes untwisted or unwound and you get a smoother, not twisted finish to your fabric or to your thread. Um, and that is because you're working against the twist of the thread and how it was manufactured. Now I want to show you some other examples. Um, a lot of times when I'm stitching, I will use a doodle cloth. The bottom of this piece was actually a doodle cloth. And I went ahead on the upper part of this piece and I started showing my bullion um, step by step some of the flowers. Here's a small rosebud. You start with your single bullion and you'll do more. Here's one where you've got a full rose. And I've got all the steps demonstrated. It's just a stylish rose here. You can put bullions on buttons, or you can actually loop them around and make like a flower, like a daisy type flower out of them. Um, so those are some examples of how you can use bullion stitches. And I have some other examples over here. Um, this bonnet that I have here uh, this is one of my classes that I teach for Saga. Um, it's got clusters of bullions on the crown, and then you've got the roses within the other part of the bonnet. Uh, thank you for joining me today on learning how to do a bullion. I hope this will encourage you to add bullions to your projects and explore embroidery and bullion stitching even more. Thank you.